Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Uh, we only five so far. I will start when we are ten. Uh, six so far. So I'm just waiting for the number to get to 10 and then we begin. Uh, we are still six. I've been asking you to unmute. Uh, such that we begin. Okay, good morning once again. I think uh, we need to start. Uh, if all of us are fine, I hope we didn't have or, or get any casualties of what happened yesterday. And if uh, you are actively participating, uh, you now know uh, what it means. Uh, when uh, justice evades us. Um, for us, we shall study, uh, since we are meeting online, uh, we shall proceed uh, first uh, by reviewing what we did earlier. And I'll give one more example of journals. 
And before we proceed uh, to mix responsibility. So allow me to share uh, my screen and then we shall proceed. Uh, what I'm sharing is a journal and um, I want us to see what you'll be meeting when you start uh, your practical cataloging. So I have a scanned image of the cover of the journal. And um, this is a journal which has changed title, but this is the top cover. I'll scroll down for you to see the details. From what we see on this cover, there is AVL in very big uh, letters. And then in there, there is multimedia information. If you look critically, AVL, after it, there is a colon, but it is uh, overlapped by multimedia information. So it may not be so clear at this moment what the title proper is, but there is an indication that there must be a title proper and then other title because of that column. Uh, the, the numbering of this journal, which is volume 22, number one, February 1996. And also the standard serial number is given on this top cover, which is 03023451. I move to the back cover. Uh, it still gives us uh, similar information, FVL, mass media information. Then they mention the editorial team. All these are never recorded in our entry, unless when we have an editor who is a founding editor. Otherwise, we shall not uh, record any one of them in our entry. I further move down. What do I find? The name of the printer printed by Bookmark uh, in the city Ivanes, which is found in Scotland. And then also the email, which we never use, and the website of that particular journal. So that is the content I get from the back cover. I move uh, to a page which is behind uh, the, or I would say the front of the back cover. It still gives us some details, multimedia information, not subscription and advertising rates for 1996. So we can tell now that this was published in 1996. Uh, subscriptions for journals, uh, we need to capture the terms of availability and that is the subscription fee. So we shall have uh, this uh, 50 pounds if you are in the UK but if you are in other countries, it is 55 pounds. So this is what we shall capture. And then we shall qualify uh, the subscription fee with other countries. Uh, more details on this page that we use. I'll scroll down. Not everything that is given we shall use but I'm picking those details that are vital. Publication dates. It is published 1st Feb, 1st May, 1st August, and 1st of, uh, 1st November. And these are one, two, three, four times. 
four times in a year is what we refer to as quarterly. So the frequency of publication is quarterly, given this information there. So those are the details we shall, uh, we shall utilize uh, to catalog uh, this uh, journal. I have a reason I started with this. It is for 1996. Assuming that is the only volume you had in your library, then you use those details uh, to uh, catalog this journal. Uh, but there is something uh, that you will discover when you look at another volume of the same. Uh, starting with this uh, must aid, uh, journals don't have title pages. We have the contents page, which has uh, the must, and that is what they call as the must aid. You will notice that there is some information here which states that the audiovisual librarian, multimedia information, you can see title proper and other title, is the official journal of the, of the audiovisual group of the library session and the multimedia group of ASLIB in the UK and is published quarterly. So from this statement, we are getting the statement of responsibility that the person responsible for this journal being uh, published, whenever we see that statement, is the official journal. It means that particular individual or institution is responsible for the journal. So our main entry heading will go under audiovisual group of the library association. There are two, but we shall pick the first one too take the main entry heading, and then we shall have an added entry for multimedia group of asleep, which is in the UK. So the frequency, this we shall capture in the note area, that this journal is published quarterly. The ISSN will come after the note area. And the copyright year is 1996. You see this uh, logo. We shall also capture that. So those are the details. The managing editor is never captured. But we shall see somewhere where it is stated who published this uh, journal. I'll scroll down and see that information, the AVL is desktop published by Anthony Ag Thompson. So this person is the one who published this journal using his desktop. If you have added that course of DTP. So whereas that person is the managing editor, we don't capture this in the statement of responsibility, but we shall capture uh, this information that Ag Thompson is uh, the person responsible for publishing uh, this particular journal. So that is uh, the example I want to catalog uh, with you before we move to uh, mixed responsibility. So I'll display this. Uh, once again, so what do we do? Uh, we draw our entry and then I'll first of all capture the heading, which is uh, audiovisual group of the library. And then I'll proceed to give area O. After area O, I'll mention the title proper, it is clear here, audiovisual librarian. And then the other title, multimedia information. 
Then I'll move to the statement of responsibility before capturing this numbering uh, area information, which has the numerical and chronological designation. So I'll first stop the sharing of that information and then go back and look for PowerPoint. I'll do it in PowerPoint uh, such that uh, everybody follows. I'll just open uh, my PowerPoint and then we continue from there. So assuming I'll use uh, something which is already inbuilt and then I'll just add this entry to that uh, content. Um, I'll insert a new slide and then share the screen. So I'm now moving back to share the screen uh, such that you see what I intend to do. So I share my screen and then we start preparing the main entry. So this is the main entry for the publication we have just seen. I click to add uh, the title. I'll leave some space uh, for, for, I will not even leave space. I'll assume uh, this journal is uh, under the broader subject library science. But if it is a periodical, the standard subdivision is 0, 05. And since there was already a zero, I've eliminated one zero. That is why I've just put a decimal and a five. The main entry heading is audio, visual. I'll magnify this later it is a visual group of the library session just like we have Yuria in Uganda which is Uganda Library and Information uh, Association in the UK they have theirs is called the Library Association so our main entry is under audiovisual group of the library association and if that is the main entry heading our book number is a u d before i move to provide area o it is a journal in book form so the term to use is text having provided the area O, we don't have content form, rather content qualification or media type. So we just move to record uh, the title, which was audiovisual librarian. That is the title proper space, colon space. The other title is Malt Medium Information. So we are done with the title. What is remaining is the statement of responsibility. I'll leave a space forward slash space. And this is information we saw that uh, this journal is the official journal of uh, audiovisual group of the library association. And then the second one was, was the multimedia group of Asli. So I'll type that. I'll not capture that information which was stating official. 
and that info we shall leave out, but I'll just mention the groups, audiovisual group of LA. LA is the standard acronym of labor session, so I'll give it that way. And then the second institution was multimedia group of acid. And then I align uh, these details properly to start from the first intention. The A is on the first intention, and this G is also on the first intention. So let me uh, try to uh, play the slides uh, such that you can see uh, this in a bigger form. Can everybody see? I thought today I will use a meeting such that you, you unmute and then uh, respond. I'll first stop the share and uh, confirm that everybody uh, is uh, with us. So if you can hear me and you can see uh, my previous screen, uh, just type one before I continue. I've unshared the screen, but if you are watching, type one before I go back to share again and we proceed. Okay, wonderful. So since everybody can see, I'll share my screen one more time. And then if there are questions, please uh, try to unmute. And uh, we continue. Okay. I've not seen any questions. So this is how our entry looks like so far. The main entry has gone under the audiovisual group of the library station. Why? There were two groups, audiovisual group of library station and multimedia group of Vaslib. I've picked the one which was mentioned first, take the main entry heading. And then after that, I gave area O and the content form term to use is text. And unlike the example we saw when we last met, the, that example, the main entry went under title, but this had an institution which is responsible for producing uh, this journal. Title proper, audiovisual librarian, other title, multimedia information, statement of responsibility of the space, forward slash, Space, audiovisual group of LA, and then multimedia group of ASRI. In the journal, there is AND. That AND is replaced with a comma. So we have two uh, institutions responsible for producing this journal. And now I'll first end the show. And then uh, oh, I'll stop the share because now I want to type. So I'll stop the share, then share my screen again, open and share, and then I continue uh, typing. After the statement of responsibility, I leave one space, type a full stop, leave another space, then the dash, because it is small, it might not be visible. I type twice to get one which is long and then leave one space. So when we are starting a new area, leave a space, full stop, space, dash. And what do we capture now? I want to bring back that top page or the must end of the journal. So I'll first stop the share. I share my screen again pick uh, the journal and then share. 
So these are the details I want to capture. Volume 22, number one, Feb 1996. So volume will be abbreviated as VOL, but the V will be capitalized since it is beginning the area. Then number will also be abbreviated as NO, but the N will be small. FEB can also be abbreviated using FEB dot, and then later capture 1996. So we have the numerical designation that is this numbering and then we have also the chronological how do we record this i'll stop the share share my screen again go back to the entry so we shall start by abbreviating volume as v o l with a dot leave a space capture the 22 apply a comma space before giving the number the word number is abbreviated as no with a full stop and it is uh, it is number one that is captured the numbering uh, or the numerical designation in the numbering area has been captured i leave a space before the parathesis and then capture the month, which is Feb. FEB with a dot is the standard abbreviation of February, and it is in the year 1996. My space wasn't enough. It automatically went to the next line. I will align it properly later. So I close the parathesis. There is no space before that closing parathesis. I leave one space and then type a dash. That dash doesn't uh, uh, look so visible. I'm used to typing two of them. Uh, so you assume it is one such that it is as if it is big for visibility. So this is one dash. But when I use that one, it doesn't come out well so i normally uh, shift the key and then type twice i get one which is big and uh, unfortunately it, it is put a bit down but ideally it should be in the middle there so this dash implies that after feb 1996 we expect number two to come out so whereas this is number one, our set is not complete. We expect more. That is why we put that dash. And I allow me align this to start from the first indention. So I'll shift that to that position. And that ends the first paragraph. Though when I stop sharing this screen, I'll, I'll first uh, Play the slide, you see. I hope it is visible to you. Uh, before I stop the share, and then go back to share uh, the journal information. Why am I sharing? I want to go to the next details I want to capture, which were given on the journal. Uh, there was somewhere they were mentioning uh, the place the name of the printer and uh, the place of printing i'm looking for that information i think it was on the cover uh, top cover maybe yeah there it is printed by bookmark on this road we don't capture street addresses but we shall capture this city. It is a capital city of islands, which is found in Scotland. So this is information you find out what is Ivanis. So I did find out that it is a city. 
So I'll capture place of printing and then the name of the printer. There is no date. We know how to handle such. So I'll stop the share of this. Go back, share the entry. And then type. Uh, the place of printing is Eva Ness, which is in Scotland. So we can also capture the country. Leave a space, colon space. And the name of the printer is bookmark, comma, there is no date of printing. And how do we handle that? By putting ND in square brackets before closing the parenthesis. So that information is captured. I'll play the slide such that you can see it in a, a clear form. So the first paragraph has ended there. What have we captured that we last learned? Area three, the numbering area. You know, when we are dealing with its serials or continuing resources, this area three is referred to as numbering area. We have captured the numerical designation, which is volume 22, number one and then the chronological designation which is feb 1996 and that is enclosed in parathensis and this particular journal had a place of printing and then the name of the printer without a date of printing so the first paragraph is done i move to go to the second paragraph where we shall capture other details so i'll first once again share in the typing mode so when i'm at that point i can opt to continue or i will have to start a new paragraph by going on the next line but when i start a new paragraph I start from the second indention. Where I am now, where the cursor is, that is the first indention. My second indention is where the A starts from. So somewhere there. That is where I'll start from. Assuming that is the second indention. How do we handle journals? We leave three spaces. And just look at the screen. Whenever I type or click the space bar, that will be one space. So the first one, that is one, two, three. And then type a small V with a full stop. We don't record pagination for serial publications or journals or magazines. We transcribe three spaces and a small v. Why do we do that? If this particular serial audiovisual, uh, rather audiovisual librarian is published four times in a year, because that is what quarterly means. It means when we get the fourth volume, there we shall then go back and type four. We don't need to make four entries for this in the air. We shall type this entry, volume 22, number one, because it is the first one we received in the year, 1996. And then when we receive the fourth one, we shall come back to this main entry, type a four there. That is why we leave those three spaces. But since this is number one, I've left the three spaces, typed the V with a dot. I'm now ready to go to the next physical detail. Incidentally, I didn't have illustrations. 
If I add them, I would capture that information. What comes next then would be a space, semicolon space, and then capture the dimension. I've assumed it is 21 centimeters, but we can pick this journal from the library and then measure. I got disappointed with the poster. Uh, most of you use the online poster and those I've met physically have been asking, how did you measure that poster? My intention was for you to get the ad copy. And most of you are telling me, those I've met, that there are no ad copies of Katumba's presidential posters. But nevertheless, for our journal, we shall get it and measure. But I'm assuming it is 21 centimeters for now. What comes next? Uh, allow me to first stop the share uh, such that I pick uh, the journal. What comes next is the frequency information. What do we mean by frequency? How often is it published? First Feb, first May, first August, first November. So those are the dates when other volumes are published. So one, two, three, four translates to what we see as published quarterly. So this is the information we capture as the frequency. Frequency meaning how often the journal is published. So this is the first element we record in the note area. So I'll stop the share. Share my screen again in PowerPoint. And after the dimension, I leave a space, a dash space, and then I record the frequency that it is published quarterly. And that is a must note to give in the note area. And it is only after this that the next note to give, though it might not apply to this, is the language in which the journal is published. So this one is in English. I've left a space, full stop space, dash space. I'll just mention that it is English. So if we were in a French country, that note would be very vital. If, for instance, it was in French, then I would have put French there. But since for us, our official language is English and the journal is in English, this is a detail we can leave out. But for today, I've captured it. You just get to know that after the frequency, we record the language in which uh, the serial or journal is published. And it is after that, that I can opt to open another paragraph which paragraph, if you recall, starts from the first indention. So where that A is, remember I left three spaces there. So my A is around here. And it is at that point that now I will capture the ISSN. Journals or continuing resources do not have standard book numbers. What they do have is what I'm displaying, the ISSN, which is given here, International Standard Serial Number. And it is normally eight digits. You make a mistake, you give nine, then it wouldn't be the ISSN. So this is 03023451. You can see they are given in groups of four find the time and uh, uh, get more information on ISS and what do these groups represent. So I'll transcribe this by removing this screen, sharing uh, the PowerPoint entry. And then at that point, I capture the ISSN, which was 
Oh, I've already forgotten what it was. So I just have to go back, pick it again. And not recorded it on paper. So I'll record it. It is the ISN 0302344. And after it, there is more information we shall capture. I have to pick it immediately. And that is the subscription rate. It is 55 pounds for other countries. And since I'm cataloging from Uganda, I belong to other countries because I'm not in the UK or in the European Commission which is European Union now. So I'll stop the share, I'll go back to our entry and then share the screen and type the ISSN, which is 0302, then 3451. And it is only after that, we leave one space, colon space, and then give the terms of availability, which is in pounds. I'm looking for the pounds sign on my keyboard. And it looks like it is nowhere. I have a dollar sign. The pound sign is giving me something else. It is giving me the ash. So I'll just use the dollar to save on our time, though it is supposed to be 55 pounds. And then I give the qualification, which was other countries. So you can see now that terms of availability also have a qualification. So this is the qualification for that uh, subscription fee. Allow me to make this big for you to see. So we are done with the standard serial number. It started from uh, first. Uh, a moment. First indentation is where T is. Second indentation is where A is. So where A is, Second indentation is where our ISSN begins from because it is a new paragraph. And it is only after doing all that that we shall move to the tracing area. Under the tracing area, um, we leave, if I'm under I, one, two, three, four. I'll type one. Yes, uh, Navagereka, you have a question? Where did you get that 55 from? Okay, I'm answering a question from Navagereka. She's asking, Where did I get the 55? Assume this is a pound sign from. I'll first stop the share, share uh, the journal, and then show you where the 55 came from. From the subscription, in the UK, it is 50 pounds. All other countries, it is 55. So this is where I got it from. Now, Gerika, have you seen? Are you able to see? Uh, Nachibuka, Unmute your mic and then speak. Yes, I also have a question. Yeah. Um, Why well, you put you open? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You open brackets on Feb 1996 and you close. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of no death, you 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 opened and closed again. Closed. But uh -huh. I didn't see that. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Uh huh. That I open the feb. Was after that year. 
come again. You open this bracket of Feb and close it after the year. Yeah. Then at the end of bookmark, you open no date and close it again. You close it again with this other bracket, but I didn't see you opening the other bracket okay. on this side. So I missed, I missed, I missed the opening parenthesis, which I'm typing now. Is it okay now? Yes. And those are the mistakes you will make. And unfortunately, <laughs> when I'm marking, I just don't award the mark. So for you, don't make those mistakes. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, I need more clarity about this module before that. I I've not understood. This V? Yes. Uh, according to the rules, we don't capture the number of pages. Ideally, the number of pages would have been there. But since uh, these uh, serial publications are published in a continuing way, like you see this is number one, it means there is number two, number three. So the pagination of these issues is continuous. Mm -hmm. So volume 22, number one, might stop on page 99. So number two will start from page 100. So because of that, we don't mention the number of pages. We just leave three spaces there with a small V. But when we have all the issues, that is number one, number two, number three, number four, because this one is published four times, it means there will be four. When we receive the full set, then we shall fill in that space by putting the number of volumes, which will be four. But for now, it is incomplete. We don't put anything. We just leave the three spaces until when we have received the fourth one. And that is when we shall type the four there. Does that clarify things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, where are the rest? If you have a question, uh, please ask. Because I'm almost completing this uh, entry for a serial publication. And since, uh, let me check the attendance. 27 people have attended. What am I thinking now? I'm thinking that uh, you people have understood so clearly. That is why you are quiet. I'm proposing uh, to have a journal in, the, in our exam. Because it is straightforward. What do you think? Two participants have raised their hands. Please. If you're among those people who have raised your hands, just unmute your mic and then uh, ask. I have issues finding. My question is yeah. on, the, on the text, the way you aligned that word text. Is it the first intention or the second one? This is on the second. The A is also on the second. This A is where it is first. G is also first, and that one is also first. Another for, question. Yeah. On that V, the one you've just explained. Mm, so if we, had, if we had four, we would put four and not put V, or we put four V? If for four, if they were four, what does that mean? It means we have received the number one, which would be volume 22. We shall have received the number two also in volume 22, number three and four. If all the four have been received by the library, that is when we shall go back to this entry and type there, oh, sorry, and type there four. But since this is only the first one, we shall leave the three spaces there. What does the V stand for? <laughs> volume. <laughs> it stands for volumes. Is that okay? 
So if it is one volume, it will be one V. If they are two, two V. So that is the standard abbreviation for the word volumes or volume. Maria? Oh, Namatovu? Namatovu, your hand is up. Namatovu, your audio is not clear. About the colors we are writing and the, the we are writing other languages. But we saw it, but I saw it there, is, there is consistency and the consistency. So it didn't indicate only 55. Uh, Veronica, your audio is not clear. I, I'm going to, why didn't you also indicate the fifth? You just indicated only 55. Okay, your, your, your question is clear now from the chat. And I'm displaying now uh, the, that page from the journal. The 50 pounds for those people who are in the UK. For us, we are not in the UK. If we want to buy this journal, we shall pay 55 pounds. That is why I picked this. But if we were in the UK, we would pay 50. All other countries, 55. And this includes postage and parking. Because we are not there, this journal is published in the UK. And since we are not there, that is why we we'll do pay the 55 pounds. And that is what I've captured. I'll stop this screen. And it looks like I missed some detail, uh, which I'll go back and share. Um, who can tell us what we have missed in our entry? There is something very vital which we have missed here. Who can tell us? Ainom Gisha, what is it that we missed? I think the publisher. Exactly. We missed the place of publishing and the name of the publisher. I will show you those details first. And that was after that question that I realized. I'll share my journal again and show you those details. Uh, whereas it is clearly stated, I want you to note the managing editor is Anthony Ag Thompson. Where does he sit? Is in a barista with which is in the UK. But when I go further down, that same person is the publisher. The AVL is desktop published by Anthony Ag Thompson. So the name of the publisher is Anthony Ag. And the place that I will capture as uh, the, the place of publication is a barista with. So that information we had. Uh, omitted it. So I'll go back, share my screen, and then at that point, you leave one space, full stop, space, dash, space, a barista with. We start with the place, and that is a barry. It's very funny spelling. I hope I've captured it right, space, colon space, and then the one who published that journal on the his desktop was Anthony and uh, let me first type if there's somebody with a question, Thompson. And then in which year is a copyright year 19. 96. So I'll align that info properly. So I think now our information is uh, put properly. Um, if there is another question, I will receive it 
before I proceed to the tracing area. Now, our other task is to determine the subject of the book. And how do we determine this? Of course, uh, we go back to the journal. And since I have some details. Now, this is the table of contents of what this journal is covering. The contents, it has information on publications, bibliographic update in the crystal ball, archiving computer games, commercial videos. Math says something. I think this is like a story uh, component of the serial putting tobacco heritage on a video, a personal account developing a database of educational videos by conversion of suppliers, catalogs. You can see everybody is writing on the audio visuals, videos, uh, commercial videos, computer games. Um, if that is not telling enough, um, uh, you can go further and see. The, the, the journals normally state what they are about. For those who want to contribute to the journals, they give you information on what uh, that particular journal is all about. So you look for that kind of information to determine uh, what the journal is. And the, the, from our title, audiovisual librarian, multimedia information. So you can easily tell. I'm thinking before going to the Sears list that this uh, journal is about audiovisual materials. I want to confirm with the Sears list, which is on my desk. I'm checking to see if audiovisual is a subject given in bold and see if I can use it. Um, what do I have? There is audiovisual aids. And they, they tell me that when I use subjects with the audio, uh, subdivision audiovisual aids, that one is not applicable. Audiovisual education, not applicable. I have a narrower term, which is audiovisual materials. And this is used for multimedia materials, non book materials, non print materials. So I think the appropriate subject is audiovisual materials. So I'll go back uh, to our entry and the type audio visual materials as the subject. And then that was a, an Arabic. I'll have to make an entry for that is a capital Roman. I'll have to make and added the entry for multimedia group of athletes. So mild, medium, group of athletes. Oh, sorry. And that is multimedia group of athletes. And then our Roman 2 as an added entry will be uh, there is someone their audio is interrupting us maybe you should tell us what should we type as the other added entry to prepare anybody who can volunteer nobody olivia um, multimedia group of a safe. That one I've already typed. So Anthony, one, I need the second one. one. Remember the entry went under the visual group. That is one of the authors. The second author was this. Now I'm asking what other added entry shall we prepare? The question is to the whole class. If you have an idea, 
you put up your hand or unmute your mic and then tell us what we should give. Hello? Yes, I'll, please. I'm uh, suggesting title added entry. Exactly. So we shall have to prepare a title added entry. So since this is the main entry, we shall type title. And uh, there is no series. It would mean that that is how our main entry uh, would look like. What do we have to do next? And this is for everybody. This is our first uh, online activity that you will do. You will prepare added entries. How many are they? One, two, three. So you have uh, three added entries to prepare for this publication. So that is uh, what you will do as an assignment and you are to submit uh, before we do our exam. So I'll stop this here. I hope you have uh, a record of that entry in case you don't, and then you'll wait for me to share the same uh, when I'm done with the lecture. So any question before we move on? Anybody with a question about uh, that uh, last example of continuing resources? Mm. Christine, uh, stop yawning from the class. You can mute your mic. So if there are no questions, uh, let me check in the chat. The assignment is prepare added entries. Prepare added entries for the serial publication. Which serial publication? The audio visual. So please uh, prepare added entries for the serial publication is, is the one that you will do. And uh, I tried to type, but it was going to Derek who is not with us. Um, I don't know why my chat is not active, but at least uh, they responded. Okay, now I think I'll send it. That is the assignment. Uh, if there is no other question, I'll move to what uh, we are covering today. And that is mixed responsibility. So let us see what we mean by mixed responsibility. Uh, mixed responsibility under the rules, it is rule 21.8. What does it cover? Uh, the scope in many works, the responsibility is divided. What this means is that if someone has written a book, maybe another person has provided uh, the illustrations in the book. So those two people are contributing in different capacities. So that is what we mean by the responsibility is divided. This occurs when different persons or bodies have contributed to the intellectual or artistic content, performing different kinds of functions. 
for instance, someone could have written the music and then the person who sings the music is different. So those two people are contributing in different kinds of functions. So it can be writing, adapting, illustrating, translating, etc. So those are the different kinds of functions uh, someone can perform on a given work. So determining or determination of main entry depends to a large extent on the relative importance of such contributions. If someone has given you one picture in your old book, I think that is not so important for it to be recognized. But if someone has provided all the pictures in the book, then it is important and that, that such a responsibility is recognized. Uh, the rules are divided into two basic categories of mixed responsibility. The first one is where we modify previously existing works. For instance, revised editions, adaptations, or translations. You have seen books which have been adapted in two films. So you have read a book, but instead of uh, uh, reading that book now, it is also provided in the form of a film. And we have seen many of those. And uh, then the revised editions, you have seen uh, the Bibles, and you have seen also pastors uh, being against some versions or editions. So those are modifications of previously existing works. And we, are, we also have an example of our constitution. There was the 1962 constitution, then the 1995, then you have seen how the 1995 constitution has been touched. Those are the modifications we are talking about. And then the second category is where we have new works that consist of different kinds of contributions, such as illustrated texts or musical works with works by persons other than the composers. We have seen very many artists um, coming up with the new songs, but uh, those songs have different contributions and they, we cannot say they are modifications. In fact, the modifications are so major that uh, they are treated as new works. So that is the second category. Starting with the first one, Modifications of previously existing works, which are they? There are many, but we shall look at a few. Works that are modifications of other works. It is rule 21.9, and I want to emphasize that you don't need to cram the rule number. You just know that in case you want to catalog a particular work which is a modification, you will go to the rules, check the table of contents, and then find uh, where it is. The general rule is that works that are modifications of other works may be entered under the heading appropriate to the new work, or that is appropriate to the original. So it is two-way. It might be appropriate to use the original as the heading, or it might be appropriate to use the new work, depending upon the nature of modification. If the modification is minor, then the original heading will be used. But if the modification has changed the nature or content of the original in a, sub, in a substantial way, or if the medium of expression is different, the new heading is chosen. We have seen um, artists uh, modifying music of others 
and then you'll find that maybe uh, for instance we have uh, uh, King Sa and then uh, Shiba Karunji they resang um, is it Megadi as a song and then for me I think it is a new one and uh, when I'm cataloging that particular music I'll give it a new ending and that new ending will be under those two artists but however if the modification is a rearrangement rearranging is just you just change the position of things if someone started with a chapter of uh, canons and then for you you redo their work and put the chapter of canons at the end that is a rearrangement so that is not a big modification if it is an abridgment you have summarized some other person's work then we shall still consider the original personal body as being responsible so whenever we have modifications which are rearrangements or abridgments then the original personal body is still seen as being responsible so the original adding will be used i hope uh, in this slide it is clear when should we consider uh, using the original adding that is when we just have rearrangements abridgement uh, those uh, situations where we shall still consider the original person or author if the modifications are major then the person who has done those major modifications will take on the main entry adding but we have a very particular one which we call adaptations of texts you can adapt a text but when we do then the adapter takes the main entry adding adaptation of texts are entered under the adding of the adapter that is if you know who adapted or under title if the adapter is unknown it might not be easy for us to get such works you have a work you don't know the adapter but it is an adapted work then it goes under the main uh, rather the title but if you know the adapter please the main entry goes under the adapter and what do we do for the original person we make what we call a name title added entry is made for the original work the examples of adaptations are paraphrases to paraphrase is like to say something in a different way from how it was previously then changes of literary form for instance dramatization you have already those books of shakespeare which have already been turned into drama so those are changes of literary form and then adaptations for children for instance you have read that book animal farm they have made films but those films now are targeted to children such that they are made in form of cartoons so those are the examples we can give then i have this particular example where the adapter has taken the main entry taylor erin l is an adapter so we'll capture that name first of course area all there is missing we'll would put the word text the title is little pilgrim's progress by erin h taylor this alone might not be clear to you but we have a note expand, expanding upon this statement of responsibility which says the adaptation for children of the pilgrim's progress john bunyan it means this pilgrim's progress was the original title written by john bunyan but ellen 
Taylor adapted it for children. And that is why now Taylor Ellen takes the main entry heading. And when she adapted it, the title changed to Little Pilgrim's Progress. But previously, it was The Pilgrim's Progress, written by John Bunyan. So this is an example of an adaptation of text. In other words, it is in text form. Who adapted it? Taylor, Ellen, she's known, so she takes the main entry. But for John Bunyan, we shall prepare what we have called a name title added entry. A name title added entry would be made for the original author and title. And of course, an added entry will also be made for the title page title. So Bunyan John, who was born in that year and died in that year, with this title, this is what we'll call a name title added entry. So this would be the heading of uh, the original work. You first give the name, good enough, this one had even these years of birth and death, apply a full stop, and then give the title, full stop. So there will be an entry under Bunyan John, Pilgrim's Progress. And that is what we refer to as a name title added entry, which is made for the original author and title. You give the name, separate it from the title using a full stop, and then you give the title. But we shall also give what they are calling the title page title. Our new book has a title on the title page, and that is Little Pilgrim's Progress. This one here, the one here above. This is Little Pilgrim's Progress. So we shall make a title added entry for this new work. So that is how we handle adaptations of texts. I have one book in the library. I know I will get time, borrow it, I scan it for you, and then you will have to try it out as our other our work to do. So before we meet next, I will have scanned that book. I know you are not on campus. I'll give more details about the book after scanning the title page, verse page, the cover. I'll give the other information and then you practice by cataloging that book. I'll first pause and then uh, welcome Derek to our uh, lecture. Derek, are you there? Unmute and we see how you went through yesterday. Uh, are you alive? Derek? Oh, it is your ghost online. Any questions? So far? Is the bot online? I think we also need to clarify on the coursework. I sent a message through your colleagues yesterday, and I used those uh, people simply because they are around the East list. And since I'm not on WhatsApp, I normally tell them what to communicate. And the message was, uh, because of the challenges of for those who missed the test, uh, for those who are not studying online, like now I see 31, uh, but uh, I know you are supposed to be 122 for both classes. So it would be unfair to continue uh, giving work which is contributing to the coursework uh, when a big percentage is not involved. So the suggestion was that I take the group work test as the coursework. If uh, you are in agreement with that, uh, type two. If you are not in agreement, type three.
Okay, I can see uh, a third of you. And Chomgisha doesn't know which group work. Uh, Chomgisha, that is group work test we did before the lockdown. You never had a group. Anybody who never did that group work now, for you, you qualify for an individual test. And that test can only be given to you if you request for it. Please, if you perform the badly in the group work, that is if you have less than 15, request for a test. And when you request, it will be given. So I think today I'm going to publicize the group work test marks, which you already know, but it will be for purposes of ensuring that everybody knows that they have a mark. I'd also propose to upload the marks in the AIMS to the head of the department, uh, but she advised that that is risky for students, especially those students who end up getting 48, 49 when the exam is combined with the coursework. So I'll keep the marks with me. And the, why I intended to do that was that I was retiring next month, uh, but uh, we had a discussion and I think I've decided uh, to stay. So I'll be around after December, but uh, I was counting down to my last day of work. It has not worked out. I withdrew my resignation, so I'll be around. So it means I can keep the marks with me till when you have done the exam, and then we upload uh, those marks when they are complete. Hey, Ochaya, what has got done? Hmm? Ochaya, what has got done for you? You expect to get a 49? <laughs> okay, so that is uh, that bit of the coursework. Everybody is agreeing. We take the group work. And please don't again turn around and say, but we were given only one coursework. The reason why we have decided that way is because of the difficulties of accessing uh, these tests online. Um, I thank God he didn't listen to our prayer. Hey, you are thanking God he didn't listen to your prayer. Hey, for leaving you, for leaving me. Uh, listen to Chaya, the way you communicate. Thank God he didn't listen to your prayer for leaving you. <laughs> okay, back to... Uh, our presentation, I would have wanted us to do some work before proceeding. I wonder if uh, that will be fine. I want to move to the next one, illustrated texts. We have texts, uh, texts which are modified, but when they are illustrated, the text, how do we handle? The general rule is when an illustrator has added illustrations to a text, the main entry is under the heading appropriate to the text. For example, this example is one where we have the author, Jennifer Day is the author, but this particular publication was illustrated by Tony Chen. So this is a good example of mixed responsibility. Jennifer Day wrote the book, but this book was illustrated by Tony Chen. 
if you recall, I mentioned the earlier that we no longer show that someone is an author using this by. So we shall delete this. But you will notice that these other responsibilities, like for the illustrator, we mention it such that it is clear. So the main entry goes under the author, Dave Jennifer W. But we shall prepare an added entry for the illustrator. And that is why we are saying added entries will be made for the artist, that is the illustrator, and for the title. So Chen Tone is an added entry for the illustrator. And then we shall also have an, ad an added entry for the title, which is what is a bird. Hmm? This is the first example we are seeing where we have an author and then an illustrator. Therefore, we need to note this punctuation device. When we have an author and another person performing another responsibility, the punctuation device we use to combine the two is a space, semicolon space. And this is also what we refer to as subsequent statement of responsibility. This one is an author. The next one is the subsequent statement of responsibility, meaning this is the next statement of responsibility of another person performing another function. So I hope this uh, makes it clear. It is a mixed responsibility, author, illustrator. But this illustrator is performing this responsibility on a work written by Jennifer. So it is subsequent statement of responsibility. These publications are many, where you have an illustrator and an author. We can also have the author, then we have editor. Mm -hmm. We can have also an author, then a translator. So that is a subsequent statement of responsibility. But this particular one that we are looking at is for illustrated text. I want to stop this and then ask if there is a question. Any question about illustrated text? I'm typing where I want questions. When we have illustrated text, you shall prepare the main entry under the author, and then the illustrator will get an added entry. It is as simple as that. And if there is no question, what we need to do is to get more examples of actual publications. I'll move back to the presentation oh it normally goes back um, the next one after illustrated text is the revision of text and we have also had examples of these where we have a book which is revised enlarged edition so those we have seen, but let us look at it one more time. A revision of text where the original author is considered responsible. The main entry for the original work is used for a revision if either the name of the original author appears in a statement of responsibility in the revision or the name of the original author appears in the revision's title proper and no other name is named in a name in the statement of responsibility or other type of information. The revisor condenser is given an added entry. Such revisions include condensations, enlargements, revisions, and updates. And uh, however, abridgments are always entered under the original author. 
with an added entry for the abridger. Condensations that involve rewriting are considered to be adaptations. And when someone condenses and there is rewriting, so that is an adaptation, so the adapter takes the main entry. So we have an example of a revised work which is entered under the original author. The original author is Gray. Title, Anatomy of the Human Body by Ellen Gray. That is why we have this statement there. This person wrote the book, so takes the main entry. But the 30th American edition was edited by Carmine Clement. So we shall prepare an added entry for this person. Why? This person edited the 30th American edition. So added entries are made for the revisor, who is Clement, and for the title, Anatomy of the Human Body. So this is an example where the revised work goes under the original author. And the person who has revised, in this case, Clement, is provided with an added entry. And of course, normally, there is a title added entry. And don't forget our area over there, the word text. Next, uh, we have modifications where the original author is no longer considered responsible. Uh, so that I'll request you to read through I believe we also need to be active. Translation, we have those where the translation is entered under the original author. So if you translate some other person's work, it doesn't mean that the work is yours. Um, but there's something here which um, necessitates me to go through this modifications where there are translations. A single translation is, is entered under the heading appropriate to the original. An added entry for the translator may be made. So we make an added entry for the translator. So the example we have, the translation is entered under the original author. If for instance, you translate the Sears list to your language. It doesn't mean you are the author. So we shall take Sears as the original author. And then we make an added entry for you as translated. So in this example, Salo is the original author. But it was translated from Russian by Perelman. So Perelman will get and added the entry. Then added entry will be made for the title, which is 12th Chess Tournament of Nations. But there is a note here, which says added entries are not usually made for translators. In addition, the original title should be used in a uniform title. So it is a normal practice not to make added entries for translators. But, you know, as the cataloger, you decide. Will people be looking for that work under the translator's name or the original author? And then you decide uh, whether to prepare an added entry for uh, the translated work under the translator. So those are the modifications I thought uh, we should look at. There are others, like in this slide, that I prefer not to look at. Uh, because the rules are available, we can consult uh, those rules and then be able to handle. So this is what I had for you today. I'll stop the share and then also share the same uh, presentation uh, which might not necessarily be 
Um, I'll just first go back. I'll share the same, uh, which is not in PowerPoint, in case you need it. Uh, it is the rules, the same rules, uh, but in PDF. So I'll just share the same things uh, online if Mwere is okay. So adaptations of what works have not looked at. But this you'll get in this PDF text published with the bibliographical critical material. I've not looked at. I stopped at that point. So that was it uh, for today. If you have questions, please unmute. Ask. Um, Vicent Ochaya, which church do you go to? Um, the rest, please, if you have questions, uh, type your questions. There are some of you who are not aware of the examination timetable. Please go online, check the timetable. And of course, uh, the political situation might lead some of you missing exams. So try as much as possible to avoid uh, places where there is chaos. Uh, yesterday, I witnessed uh, people shooting and of course the shooting we normally hear the sound when we are very far but you can imagine people shooting uh, when you are in the middle i'm walking yesterday i walked back home uh, but those who were shooting were just beside me on the roadside and of course you would just look at them and see where they are pointing their guns but most of them were pointing up but unfortunately, we lost some people. So we don't want that to happen to our students. So please, wherever you see any riot, make sure you are not there. Don't participate. You sit your exams. Complete your course. The change will come that you need but you don't need to die before that change comes. Questions before we close the meeting? Please unmute. I don't know the, the added entries that you have told us to finish. Do they need to be submitted? Number of yes, when you submit them, then I can give you guidance. It is only when you have tried them out that I can give guidance, that is number one. Number two, for some of you who did not excel uh, in the group test, you will have something to fall back to. So it is important that whatever activity is given to you, you try it out such that when the going gets tough, you have a backup. So please, uh, maybe you needed a deadline for that. I didn't think we need a deadline. Do we need a deadline for submitting that? Veronica, you want a deadline? Yes, she says yes. Tend also says yes. So the deadline is tomorrow. Should the assignment be typed or unwritten? Now, let me tell you why um, it is better to unwrite. When you write your work, you own it. That is why I requested you to unwrite your poster entries. But unfortunately, those of you I saw 
you were even discussing your entries, then again you would write separately and then submit. So it doesn't really add value to you. If you don't try out these assignments. They are given to you such that you affect and find out if you have learned anything from what we have covered. So I want to make it optional. You write your entries. Of course, you start with the main entry, which I've given you. Write the added entries. Um, take a picture. Send on my email. And I want to make it clear that it is optional. I don't think we need uh, any more stress with this online learning. But you know, when I have that kind of work and you have challenges, like all of a sudden you have a 49, I'll go back and see, oh, was Vincent active? Did Vincent send the added entries during the online learning? Then I can pick the one mark from there. Najita, the deadline should be before the cataloging paper. If you have done the exam, why would you then again keep on submitting things to me? So if you can't do it before the exam, please don't send. I hope that makes it clear. So if there are no other questions, I will end the I will end this by first of all checking our course outline to see how far we have gone, such that we plan uh, knowing uh, there is anything more left. I will share my screen and then uh, we see what is remaining. So share screen and the screen to share is the course outline. So I'll move up to show to you that all that is colored is done. Uh, week nine, mixed responsibility, we are done. We are done with that. I'll just put blue. Then modification of text adaptation. We are through with this. Only that we have not had an example uh, of the unactual book, illustrated text. We are done. Revision of text. We saw that. What would be remaining is headings for corporate bodies. What if we get books which have been authored by corporate bodies? For instance, MTN. The main entry goes under that particular corporate body. So we shall look at that, and then the rest will be left to you. So this is what we are remaining with. Headings for corporate bodies. When I'm done with this, then I'll ask you whether you catalog the return online. But it says present a record book of catalog entries cataloged online. So this now is for you to be done individually. You have cataloged your 10 books online using CoA. Please make sure that for those 10 books, you have a record of the many entries in your record book. And I want also to state that this is something that will assist you to practice or perfect what we have learned. So we shall meet once. Um, should we do it next week? I think we need uh, to rest a bit. I'm told you have tests. So next week, I'll wind up with this. Uh, someone was saying something. Kenneth? Asia, Kenneth and Asia, are you neighbors? What are you saying? We are neighbors. 
Oh, you stay in Mary Stewart. Okay, good for you. So I'll close the meeting and tentatively we shall meet next week. I'll communicate when to meet because I wasn't even sure that we'll do attend today's lecture because of what happened yesterday. So nice weekend, have a good time.